Okay, I'm recording. All right, great. Okay, so the observer. So the observer is a thing, and I've got here, um, I'm going to hold this up. This is my clock here. And as you can see, this is an object. Now, when, I, when you have anything in front of you, which is an object, and uh, or if you look at anything in, in the room in front of you, you'll see a mug or a cup or, or a lamp or whatever it is. Have a look at the mug and, and, and recognize in spiritual experience, you don't need to think about it, but it's very, very clear when there's observing of the mug that the mug or the object or the cup or the table is not you. It is observed to be out there. There's detached observing. Objects out there are not, uh, are recognized as a spiritual experience that they're not you. So a mug is not you. You don't, you don't have the experience that the mug on the table is you. Uh, so the next thing then is, and this is what's called, uh, and there's a process called self-inquiry, which I'm sort of saying originated out of Ramana Maharishi, one of the great Indian saints, uh, enlightened teachers, uh, which is, okay, so what is, um, so the next thing is uh, we inquire into, well, if I'm not an object that's being observed, then what is my experience of myself? So the next thing is thoughts. Now thoughts, the Course in Miracles says, all my thoughts are meaningless. So if all my thoughts are meaningless, as all these thoughts are, are meaningless, then these thoughts that pass by, like, uh, like mugs passing by, or clocks passing by, or clouds passing by, are, is the experience that the thoughts are you, or is the experience that thoughts are observed? There is an observing of thoughts. Thoughts are out there, like passing clouds, but you are not the thoughts. If there's that clear recognition, then that shows you're an advanced, uh, an advanced uh, spiritual seeker that it's now very, very clear that thoughts that pass by are totally irrelevant. They're totally meaningless. Um, and the, and oneself is not a thought. And even, and if one is a ad very advanced spiritual seeker, the, you know, um, essentially one is more or less uh, experiencing the thoughtless present, the thoughtless, thoughtless now, because one of the laws of consciousness is when something in consciousness has no meaning, it disappears. So when thoughts are so interesting and, and so boring and so uninteresting that they have no mean, and they're not given any meaning to the, and the ego projects no meaning on thoughts because that mechanism of projecting meaning onto thoughts has dissolved a hundred percent. Actually, one is in the thoughtless now. So that's a great uh, thing. And, and part of my a tip really that I learned from my teacher, Dr. David R. Hawkins, that you can disappear any experience in consciousness, just let it go. Uh, the only reason it registers in consciousness is because there's meaning or the ego projects value or meaning onto it. Otherwise it's totally relevant. So the um, uh, consciousness is not affected by any object that passes by. Uh, when the only experience of uh, victimhood with passing objects is when the ego is involved and creates a dualistic relationship. Okay, so if you're experiencing a busy head or a wobbly mind or, or thinkingness or you're all over the place in the thoughts, then recognize that the thinkingness and the thoughts passing by are an object. For me, it's more like an energy field of something is being interested in these passing thoughts. The thinkingness is like a, a is like an object. Like in a cinema, if you see a movie, you're not the screen and the images on the movie. You just you're the observer of the movie. So if you don't hypnotize yourself into believing that the movie is real, then there's the experience is actually an image out there which is totally irrelevant. And if there's no interest in a movie screen, it disappears. So. If there is, if you are experiencing self as your thoughts, now be the observer of the thoughts. Now, as the observer of the thoughts, if you experience yourself as the observer of the thoughts, is the observer hooking into thoughts still? And if it is, is there, an, that's what I call an interested obs uh, observing of thoughts. The observer seems to have interest or is hooking into thoughts. But is there an observer that observes this observer? 
And if there's an observer and that is observing, is there an observer that's observing the observer which has no interest in the interested observer? So if this is the pure observer, then the thoughts will, you know, will be irrelevant and they'll be just clear observing, clear detached observing, not being tormented by the field of thoughts, not being a victim of the passing thoughts. Okay, the next big one, and the Course in Miracles does talk a lot about this and, and repeats it over and over again as the Course and the wisdom of the Course knows that, you know, in this realm of duality and separation, one of the biggest torments is that, uh, uh, and one of the big, biggest bondages of the ego is it loves identifying with the physical body. So the next thing to do, and, and hence the Course says, I'm not a body, I'm free, for I'm as God created me. I'm not a body, I'm free, for I am as God created me. God didn't create me as a body, limited uh, in separation in this world of torment. So if, there, if there's, you know, so if you're sitting down and you're listening to this video uh, on uh, Zoom or on YouTube, so is there an awareness of the body, like how tall it is? Is there an awareness of the shape of the body? Well, that means it's an object. It's a limited object. It has a height, a width, just like a mug on a table, or just like a cloud in the sky. It has an object. There's something observing it. So can you be the observer of the body? Is the observer of the body limited by the body? And if it is, that's what we call a limited observer. And is there an observer observing the limited observer? This way, you can disappear the body, it becomes irrelevant. And one isn't sort of uh, in bondage to the, the awareness of the body. But also some people, I uh, forgot to mention, may have like stomach ache or aches and pains or headaches or bad breathing or whatever it is. But all of these are also objects, like a sense of tightness in the chest is an object. Something is observing that. Can you be the observer of tightness in the chest if there's breathing problems? If there's a muggy head, well, maybe there wasn't a muggy head yesterday. So the muggy head is actually an object. So can you be the observer, for example, of a muggy head? Um, if there is, um, so in that way, if you be the observer, then you hook into a place. Now, as you keep doing the observer and whatever the experience of limitation is, experience, and then you check that is the observer still limited? Is it like a limited observer? Well, if it has limits, what's observing the limits? So in this way, um, you just keep doing it to see whether the observer is in any way limited. In, uh, is it a limited observer? Is it limited to the body? Is it limited to thoughts? Is it limited to time? Is it limited to location? Is it limited to images or memories or whatever it is, these passing things that come and go? Is the observer subject to things that can come and go? Is it subject to time or death or... So now I'll just give us a, a minute, stop the, this recording, give us a minute inside.